All right, we've had a few more people join. Uh, what do you say, Harry? Should we go ahead and kick it off? Hey. Yeah, let's let's give it off. Good uh, morning, everybody. Uh, I am Harry Glasgow. I am a very proud associate director of the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District. And one of my duties has always been to introduce the green breakfast. Um, in the past, we've been able to do this at Brian's Grill. Uh, now, as a result of the pandemic, we are now doing this virtually. So I, I will have to cut a little bit of what we normally do as, a, as an introduction and uh, simply uh, introduce our speaker. Our speaker is Margaret Fisher, who is a dear friend of mine um, and uh, a, a retired physician uh, who has decided that now what we have to do is uh, do something about native plants. And uh, my partner, Nancy Beers, and, and I and, and others are part of this program that we want to plant Nova trees. Northern Virginia trees, because trees are an extremely important part of, of our life. Um, I don't have any statistics on Margaret, uh, but I do know she's a retired physician. And, and uh, I remember sometimes wandering around the halls of Kaiser Permanente in Springfield and there was, there'd be Margaret. So, uh, we, uh, became friends uh, as as she never treated me for anything uh, but nonetheless we had good fun so uh if there is nothing uh, more to say and i've said everything even that which is not necessary um shall we i would like to introduce our guests to margaret fisher margaret take it over okay thank you very much let me just share my screen, hopefully successfully this time. All right, you are seeing my screen, I hope. Yep. Okay, so everybody needs to keep in mind that um, when I'm sharing my screen, I can't see anybody or hear anybody for the most part or see the chat. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if I'm going off <laughs> and you and not making sense, just interrupt me um, and I pretty much have to wait to the end for questions. All right, so I'm the outreach coordinator for Plant Nova Natives and now Plant Nova Trees. Let's see, there we go. Okay, um, so what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Plant Nova Natives in case you're not familiar with the, our um, campaign and then why we decided to go. Um, turn it into partly a tree campaign, how we've organized that campaign, what we've done so far, what still needs to be done, which is a lot, and how you can help. And uh, that part I'm really interspersing throughout my talk because at every step, there's lots of ways that people can participate. So, uh, what is Plant Nova Natives? Plant Nova Natives is what is called a collective action movement. The concept between, behind that is that um, everyone, every organization has the same general goals, but are working on separate issues. So, if those various organizations can pool their resources and choose one of, one of our common themes to all work on, we can greatly amplify our message. Each organization makes whatever contributions are most suitable to their mission and their stakeholders. And the steering committee, made up of representatives of those organizations, provides coordination and support. The general goal that our organizations all have in common is a desire to save our local ecosystem. And the common theme that was chosen for, um, was to promote native plants, basically because it's such a positive message that anyone can act on. And if we can get people to understand why native plants are important, that many of the other issues just logically follow, such as the importance of avoiding insecticides and invasive plants, we can be positive and get those negative messages across um, more subtly. If you don't see your logo up here and you want it to be there, 
on our website, just let me know. There are actually over 150 organizations who've been helping with the Plant Nova Natives campaign, governmental, nonprofit, and for profit. This is a social marketing campaign. Our job is to inspire and educate and make it easy for people to act. The campaign is not incorporated and relies entirely on the partnering organizations and the volunteers to do the actual work or to plant plants. It always amuses and frustrates me when people say to us, you should do this or you should do that. There is no you, <laughs> there's only we, plus a very small group of we's helping to coordinate. So Plant Nova Natives started out working on outreach to residents and then fairly quickly realized that we are not going to be able to reach 2.5 million people one at a time. I joined the campaign maybe five or six years ago. And one of the most memorable mo moments of my life was when I asked this question of the steering committee, what is the goal for Plant Nova Natives? Is it to put out the native plant guide, which is wonderful and took a lot of work to do before I ever joined, do some events and leave it at that? Or is the goal to actually change the landscaping culture of Northern Virginia? So the folks that were gathered around the table that day kind of looked at each other for a few seconds. And then they said with one accord, that, that's our goal. So from that moment on, we knew that we really had to up our game. We started working with community associations and faith communities um, to reach larger groups at a time and um, try to increase demand for native plants. And then in time, we realized that most planting decisions are actually made by professionals. So we started our outreach to landscape professionals, including conferences and materials that are geared to them. Volunteering for this campaign is one of the most fun things I have ever done. I can't say enough about the amazing and dedicated people who come to our steering committee meetings, some of them for year after year. The native plant movement is clearly an idea whose time has come because hundreds and hundreds of people have stepped forward to participate, both to help with our outreach and to do their own outreach in their own communities. In general, if we're not marketing, um, if we're, we are not marketing people. So we've had to try things out and make it up as we go along, which has been a very fun and creative process. We keep coming up with new ideas for what we can do on a minimal budget. In general, the only limiting factor has been finding people who have the time to implement the ideas as we think about them. We have a partners meeting every winter, and this February we focused on two things outreach to corporations, which we had not yet undertaken, and diversity and equity. We came away inspired to make both of those themes for the year. At the same time, we'd been thinking kind of idly about native trees as a publicity tool, because it's easy to see from our website statistics that trees are amazingly popular. Of all the particular plant topics we talk about, ground covers are the consistent winner followed by native trees, even though we hadn't been pushing trees very hard. Other urban areas have had their tree campaigns, so why not us? We felt that we had created a big enough network and had enough experience with social marketing to take on a project this ambitious at this time. There is no way we could talk on, take on all three major focus areas in the same year. But then we had an epiphany. Why not start a tree campaign that includes outreach to corporations to become sponsors, not to donate us money, but to plant trees on their own properties and provide resources for climate vulnerable communities to add natural climate mitigation to their neighborhoods. It would be three birds with one stone. Thus, Plant Nova Trees was born. By happy coincidence, the Virginia Department of Forestry had been asked by DEQ to plant 600,000 trees just in Northern Virginia between last October and 2025. Our, our efforts might be able to help the region achieve its stormwater goals. They want us to report the trees that are planted so they can keep track 
And we have a reporting form on our website for that purpose. The next step was to gather as many people with an interest in trees from around the region as we could find on short notice. We called upon our current partnering organizations and reached out to every tree organization we could find, including foresters working for government agencies, tree commissioners, tree stewards, etc. We met together a few weeks later and immediately divided into five teams, which have been working hard ever since with coordination done at our usual monthly steering committee meetings. Keep in mind, like Plant Nova Natives, this is a social marketing campaign. Our job is to inspire and to provide resources. The places with the most room for trees is on private property, so most of the planting will need to be done by individual landowners. Our goal is to show them why they should do it and make it as easy for them as possible. It took very little thought to realize that if we want to increase native tree canopy, urging people to plant is not enough. They must also care for their trees after planting. And most important of all, stop killing the mature trees that are already there. What good would it do to plant 600,000 little sticks if we don't staunch the loss of big trees? And so we plan to give equal emphasis to planting and preservation. We had to make a choice right at the beginning. This is really a massive undertaking, and we don't have some big government agency to go out and plant trees the way they did in New York. Putting together a plan to increase tree canopy would be really complicated. Should we try to figure out everything first before we launch the campaign? That would take a long time. Or should we choose speed over precision and get going without waiting for everything to fall in place? When we thought about the climate emergency and how long it takes for trees to grow and how quickly they can be cut down, we decided to work like crazy and get at least the publicity piece launched by September. This is all in keeping with my unofficial motto for the native plant campaign. We need maybe a hundred thousand, couple hundred thousand people to take action if we really want to make the difference we seek. One can imagine that there might be that many people out there who might be willing to plant a tree or work to preserve one, but we can't expect any one of them to take the time to learn anything much about native trees, other than that they are desirable. So we're working on strategies to make it as easy as possible. We already had relationships with 21 conventional garden centers where over 50 of our volunteers put red stickers on the native plants. With the help of our very talented volunteer, Carly Parker, who was a professional graphics designer, we created and printed 8,000 hang tags for trees and got them up in the past few weeks. That way people don't need to know which trees are native. All they have to do is walk down the aisle and look for the hang tag. Another project which we're launching just now is meant to prevent paralysis from giving people too much information. There are, are over 50 species of native trees for sale in Northern Virginia. Even I would have trouble making a choice and I just finished taking a tree ID course. So we've created an electronic hotline for people to get personalized advice about which native tree to buy. They fill out a form describing their wishes and their planting conditions how far from the house or overhead wires or whatever, and send, a, send us a photo of the area in question. Then a volunteer who knows something about trees emails them back with one or two suggestions that meets their wishes and that also reflects what might be found in nearby natural areas, thus helping to expand those habitats. We need volunteers to help answer these inquiries. In fact, we actually only have one volunteer so far. <laughs> this just got started. So please let me know if you can help. Uh, having done it myself, I know it's really quite fun to engage in these conversations with random people by email. And it's not a lot of work. We've been trying to lay out our website to make it easy for people to find the resources they need whether it be sources of trees or free services or any other help they need. We worked hard over the summer to get our new website and social media strategy ready and plan for the launch on September 1st. 
rather than trying to do one single big launch event, which after all could only reach a few people anyway, we put out a call to every organization we could think of to put on celebration of trees events anytime this fall around the region. We were right about the popularity of trees because the response has been stupendous. At least 90 organizations have expressed interest in organizing an event. Um, 50 have sent us confirmed dates, I believe just for September, <laughs> and more roll in every day. People are putting on tree talks, tree walks, scavenger hunts, library books displays, art exhibits, forest bathing, you name it. Um, on our volunteer page, there are a lot of suggestions in that regard. And if you would like to put on your own event, uh, we will happily advertise it. Our social media campaign got a subscription to something called Meet Edgar, which is a scheduling program that allows you to post to several sites at once and schedule things ahead of time. It's a huge time saver. I would recommend that to anyone posting <laughs> for you know an organization. It's I would I would never go back to what we were doing before. It's not very expensive to get a subscription to one of these scheduling programs. We're lucky to have two volunteers who are concentrating on Instagram, which is an important way to reach a younger demographic. We've laid out themes for the next year. Because of the launch period, we have two themes going on right now. Celebrate trees and essentially, have you noticed those getting hot? We'll most likely focus on planting in the spring and fall and on preservation in the winter and summer. We'll continue to put out monthly campaign updates which will include a short article for everyone to share. I want each of these articles to have some human interest and not be just about bugs and plants, which is actually much easier for me to write about. <laughs> uh, so please let me know if you have any kind of story to tell, whether it's about some small personal accomplishment, just the one tree that you planted on your property, that would be great. Um, or um, some huge organizational project, Whatever you have, I just want to mix it up and you just have to willing, be willing to have your name out in print. We're trying to devise our publicity to be, to be very simple and straightforward. Using graphics and trying not to be too text heavy. A big challenge is to quickly explain why a native tree is better than any other tree. The general plan is to start out by reminding people that they love trees and all the benefits they bring us, and hopefully get them excited about working as a community on this issue. We'll gradually introduce the topic of, of the other layers of the ecosystem and what it takes to really support habitat. Since the overall leader in popularity on our website is ground covers, we may have a winning marketing idea in planting trees and surrounding them by ground cover. The foresters tell us there's no difference between a tree and a shrub. So we'll be encouraging people to plant shrubs at the same time they plant trees, or just simply plant shrubs if their space is too small for another tree. Sometimes we have to balance giving enough information with the reality that as soon as it starts to sound complicated, the vast majority of people will tune out. The Plant Nova Natives website has been designed to be a go-to place for everything you need to know about native plants. Um, the new Plant Nova tree site, we hope to be more streamlined and yet still have in there the details that interested people such as yourselves and professional landscapers would need. So for example, we already have a page about creating mini forests written by Megan F uh, Fellows from Fairfax Stormwater. We've created a general brochure about the value of trees and ordered thousands of them. So if you have a place to give them away, just let us know. We've been fortunate to get some generous donations from individuals and from our partnering organizations, enough to allow us to pay for those tree hang tags, the website, et cetera, and also for cute removable stickers to give out. We have hopes that people will find the campaign appealing enough that they'll plaster these stickers all over Northern Virginia on their cars and laptops, water bottles, binders, recycling bins, windows, et cetera. So we've ordered thousands of them and hope you'll all think about ways to get them out there. 
we just ask that organizers try to get some sort of small commitment from the recipients to display them publicly and not just trash them since they cost about 14 cents a piece. We also ordered some static cling stickers that are suitable for putting on store windows. Do you happen to go to any small businesses that might be willing to put one in their window? Let me know and I'll mail you some. Some of these businesses might also be willing to give away stickers or brochures. Our volunteer, Bob Landsman, has most of these materials at his house and he'll mail them to anyone who fills out this form. I have the static clings for businesses at my house, so just email me about that. That same volunteer web page, by the way, has plenty of other suggestions for anyone who wants to help spread the word. Much of our publicity is geared at inspiring individuals to plant on their properties, but what about planting on a larger scale, such as in a community association? This takes very dedicated volunteers, but it can be done. We have two examples on our website and tips for how to make a volunteer tree planting campaign a success. We were very inspired by the work done recently in Tacoma Park to rescue trees from invasive vines. They counted 5,000 trees at risk in their two square miles. If you do the math, I'm assuming I did it correctly, that would work out to 6 million trees at risk in Northern Virginia. So we're starting to work on a grand plan to train volunteers to go out and spot those trees in their communities and educate the landowners about what they can do about it. We also hope to see community associations and other groups create action plans to save trees on common land. We hope to get this program launched around November. We already have a sign up form on this page for anyone who would like to be a tree rescuer in their community. We also need people with experience in invasive removal, both to mentor other volunteers and to give short training webinars to show people how to distinguish common invasive vines from native vines. So please let me know if you could help with any of that. What I've mentioned so far, these things, these outreach uh, methods, we're actually not that difficult to conceive and implement because they build on experience we've had already. Our plans for corporate outreach and outreach to climate vulnerable communities takes us into new territory. As soon as they have all the materials they need, sometimes this winter, the corporate team is planning to start approaching large companies about planting on their land, preferably not just lonely trees on lawns, but also all the plant layers wherever there's room to try to restore at least some habitat. Plenty of extroverts will be needed to connect with and negotiate with the appropriate people in these companies. So again, let us know if you'd be willing to help. I mean, there are many, many companies in Northern Virginia, so there is no limit to how many people we could um, um, put to work in having these conversations. The Climate Vulnerable Community Team has the most difficult task of all, that of slowly building relationships with communities to build trust and discover how we can collaborate on whatever environmental issues are of most concern to them. For those who are most interested in personally working towards equity and social justice, this might be the team for you. So what does that leave? A whole lot. What are we going to do about the many heat islands in our region? Pavement jungles, where conditions are harsh for trees, even if there's room to plant any, and where money is often tight. We don't have an answer for that yet. But the Northern Virginia Regional Commission is planning to start by mapping out potential planting areas so we know which landowners need to be approached. Planting in some of these areas will be very expensive. And I strongly suspect that only governments will have the resources to get the job done. But we'll certainly be appealing to the Fortune 500 and other huge corporations to implement their climate commitments in their own communities. We're going to need people to liaison with their elected officials. A few of their offices have already said they will send out an announcement about the tree campaign and we would like all of them to do that. 
We're also hoping that all the boards of supervisors and town councils will do proclamations in support of this regional effort. All our jurisdictions have climate and stormwater goals that can be partially addressed with natural climate solutions, including native trees. And the governments will need to put resources into that over the years. Taxpayer money will need to be invested in this effort. But there's a lot they can do quickly for nearly free in the way of raising public awareness. For example, the parks departments have huge email and snail mail lists they can be using. And now how about those automatic replies that go out when you sign up for a park event? Could those include information about the value of native trees and about expanding the habitat value of parks by planting natives on private property? And how about those big electronic signboards in the rec centers that have those rotating announcements? And then of course, there's the critical role of land use departments whose processes could be doing far more to encourage preservation of mature trees in development projects. Plus, we all look around and wonder, why is it that government agencies, even park departments, not to mention VDOT, as well as private citizens, choose to clear cut our remaining natural areas to put up human structures, when a lot of time right next door, there's a sea of pavement that's already ruined from a habitat perspective. If the human beings living in one of the wealthiest areas of the world can't work together to find creative solutions to these land use issues, how can we ever expect impoverished parts of our country and the world to stop the destruction of their forests? The whole point of government is to get people together to work on common issues that can't be managed by individuals. The good news is that local governments across the country, including ours, have not been waiting for Congress to take action. We're stepping up to the plate to address the environmental damage that threatens all earthlings. The even better news is that there's a tremendous amount we can do on our own without the government. And there are thousands of people in Northern Virginia already doing this work. We can see that the tide is turning in favor of native plants. Sales are way up. Public gardens and gardening magazines are all into it. Little children learn about it in school. I get encouraged when I see that there were over 70,000 unique visitors to our website in the past year. But then I look around and I notice that I can drive a mile before I see a house that has any native plants in its garden. I realize that we have a long way to go. Primarily because most people don't garden at all to begin with, except maybe to put some annuals into pots in the spring. Whatever plants came with their house, those are what gets sold with their house. We have a hugely diverse population of people with limited time on their hands and plenty of other important issues that they worry about. So if we are to really see the needle move in time to save our local plants and wildlife, we need to mobilize everyone who has heard the message to go out and tell it to others. Most of you are already doing that yourself, of course. So please be thinking of how you can get your friends and neighbors and families and coworkers to do the same. Plant Nova Trees is all of you, not some independent organization trying to promote itself. Use the Plant Nova Trees hashtags. Hashtag, add a poem about trees to your automatic signature on your emails. Put a frame around your Facebook profile photo. This is no time to hide your light under a bushel. Show people what you're doing. Personally, I never put my own photo on Facebook but maybe I'll make an exception for this. Here I am. So thanks very much for listening. And I'm very happy to take the questions and comments and suggestions. And just by the way, all of this costs money, like for postage and stickers, et cetera. So we'd be very happy to take that as well. The more money we get, the more people we reach. Thank you all very much. For anybody who has questions, um, let's hear them. Thank you very much, Margaret. We've got some questions that have come in in the chat. If you want to give those a look over for a second and breeze through them, I was going to throw up the um, mentee poll from the start on the screen. Um, 
just to give us a few minutes break in between. So let me pull that up. So with this question. Let me share screen. Hopefully. Hopefully you're all on the screen. So this was the poll this the start asking everyone to share your favorite attributes of native trees. Um, so the word cloud generator, everybody puts in their different thoughts and ideas and the ones that are um, in larger size text had multiple um, entries from different people. So um, a couple folks talking about the shade and the habitat creation, food for wildlife, beautiful, uh, shade, shady, the same there, beauty, bug life, again, more food and shelter for wildlife, uh, wildlife magnets, cooling shade, peaceful, natural, lovely birds. So just a few of those responses. Thank you to everybody who um, participated in our Menti poll while we were getting started. So Margaret, I don't know if you've had a chance to read through a little bit of the chat or if you want me to just um, help you go through those, let me know. No, that's fine, I'll just start at the top, I guess. <laughs> uh, can we plant native trees at the edge of county parkland? Um, if it's your property, you can. <laughs> Planting on park property is encroachment and uh, not to be done, absolutely not to be done. Uh, doesn't mean that there may not be some way to talk to the park departments about whatever you're um, thinking, as they use volunteers. It's, it's, it's not, you know, it may be a possibility there, but don't do it on your own now. Um, it's a matter, just as a matter of, of uh, information, uh, when we're done with the questions, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, pose uh, use of people in the parks to do this sort of work. So stand by. Very good. Uh, a, a tree would replace some grassy area that's currently mowed. Uh, yeah, um, there's there may be reasons why they're mowing or, or maybe they're just in some places mowing out of habit. Um, but, uh, you know, you can understand the issues here. Uh, if they just let people start planting Maybe they're going to plant something that isn't actually appropriate for that site. And in natural areas, they always want to only really put in things that are native to that site, and that wouldn't necessarily be easy for people to know. Um, okay. How can we get schools to participate? Uh, well, um, there, so there's two ways to go about that. One is with to working with individual schools, um, PTAs, for instance. Um, uh, teachers within schools. We we have a um, page on the Plant Nova Natives website about school gardens and working with schools. Um, and then there's school systems. Uh, so in Fairfax, there's the, uh, what's it called? Um, Get to Green um, program, which uh, is wonderful. And the leaders of that have participated in Plant Nova Natives. And they really have a, a very well-developed um, program and the stormwater division has a well-developed program within schools. Um, there are other, um, the, the um, urban foresters in Fairfax are, have been working to plant trees in schools. So there is a lot going on on the sy systemic level, um, but I feel sure that they need, you know, more involvement by people. Um, all right, so is there a law being considered to help governments have developers keep more trees? Right now, landowners can cut down any tree on their land. Uh, yeah, I, um, I, am, I am not up on the details of that. I just know that um, I've been told that there are many restrictions that have to do with Dillon rules in, in the state, um, but that we also, uh, as a um, county, I guess, or as a region, a county, have been uh, granted the ability to extend some of those rules. And I was have been told by someone who knows that 
um, our land use department could be doing more than they are now. Um, so this is these are conversations that need to be held and um, people want to get together with other people who are working on that, then I can put you in touch there. Um, how can we give away volunteer native trees from our yards? Ah, glad you asked that question. <laughs> Thanks for the easy question there. Uh, we actually just started a little program for that uh, for people who would like to donate local ecosystem trees or other plants, as long as they're local ecotype, did I say local ecosystem, Lo like local ecotype plants to donate to groups that are doing community plantings, whether it's in their um, homeowners association or their faith community property or, you know, Boy Scouts, whatever. If you'd like to donate your little seedlings to them, if you go to uh, our website, uh, I can't remember exactly where, but I could let you know if you're having trouble finding it. Well, we put up a form that you can fill out saying what you have and where you live. And then we, there's another form for groups to uh, fill out or contact us to so we can put the two people together. Because there are a lot of people who would like to donate plants and there are a lot of people who need free plants. Right now, and probably indefinitely, we are restricting this to uh, local ecotype because that's where there's really a shortage. I mean, Earth Saga cannot provide local ecotype plants for <laughs> to the whole region. It's just not possible. Um, uh, and uh, for group planting rather than individuals, uh, because it would just be too much to, to for us to take on. Okay, so let's see where did this go. Great graphic, thank you. Yeah, we are such a wonderful graphic designer. Uh, I would like to give away some trees at our civic association meeting. That would be fantastic. Um, you giving away trees. I would go to our page about how to organize tree plantings. Um, the, some tips there, you, 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 if somebody is, just walks in and is handed a tree and they're not expecting it, most likely it'll die, <laughs> you know, when they get it home. So you, have, you want to have preparation before that for people. Can we share the slides with us? I actually put these slides up, um, minus one that I just added today, on the Plant Never Natives website. There's a section called spread the word and under that is a section called the volunteer toolkit and under that is a section for presentations and we have a ton of presentations up there, including this one now. Um, are your window clings small enough to be put in a car window? Uh, well, they're, um, they're, uh, they're not water. They have to be put on the outside. So uh, I, I would, you know, that wouldn't do you much good because it would be reversed. Uh, uh, they're, they're kind of expensive. So I, I, it was too much to order both kinds, front facing and back facing. So, um, but the little stickers that we have are removable. Uh, I don't like to put bumper stickers on because it messes up the paint, but these stickers are not going to mess up the paint. Um, Let's see, but for people who just want like one for themselves, uh, you can go to the Plant Never Natives website where we have a quote unquote store that leads you to cafe press and you can just order your own, you have to pay for it, but um, so it goes. And they have like regular buffer stickers and other choices there. Uh, oh yeah, get to green, right? I have deer eating leaves of small trees and killing them by rubbing, rubbing antlers on saplings. I use small sections of fencing to protect new plantings, but is there an easy remedy to recommend to other people? Uh, well, yeah, I use I put little um, sections of fencing around mine too. I think it's really critical for really small trees to protect them from the deer. Um, and then of course there's tree tubes, but most people probably don't want to have a tree tube on there. Um, you know, just on their yard. <laughs> uh, so the fences seems like a good alternative, but I don't know of anything else. Maybe somebody else does. Have you seen the September 2nd Fairfax County Tree Commission's letter to the Board of Supervisors on improving the land development process by prioritizing trees? No, I haven't, but I would love to see that. So if you could give us the link, that would be fantastic. 
Uh, Park Authority says they don't have funding to develop and implement any coordinated reforestation program. Aha! Uh, that's an, that is a good segue for me also. Can you share efforts surrounding your work with Fairfax County Park Authority and the Board of Supervisors to fund efforts to preserve and replenish tree cover in parks and on all land owned by the government? Yes! Um, right. So, uh, I don't know if this will ever happen, but what I dream of is that our very, very large and wealthy corporations will can be um, talked into making big donations to our parks for that purpose. And um, so I have asked our various park authority, uh, you know, park people, and I haven't gotten answers yet back from all of them, but I have from Fairfax County Park Authority and Nova Regional Parks to give us sort of like a, a wish list of parks that need support for that. And um, they're perfectly happy to credit the companies and give them some publicity about it. Um, and they also can take um, small donations too, if somebody wants to um, just personally donate to the parks. So we're trying to, uh, you know, I'm encouraging them to um, identify a variety of parks, preferably ones that are in um, less resourced communities to help with our efforts to uh, our equity efforts um, that people can donate to. So let's see what else. Um, do I know of any landscape architects that can help with the des design of native plant garden? Oh yes, um, that's not a problem. <laughs> uh, on the Plant Nova Natives website, uh, and you can get to it also from Plant Nova Trees, NovaTrees.org. Um, we have lists of uh, landscapers who specialize in native plants. Uh, these are um, some of them do nothing but uh, work with native plants. Uh, and others just have a particular interest and expertise. They're self-identified, you know, we don't have any way of rating them, um, but from what I know, they're all wonderful. Now, uh, let's see. Picture of my sticker on a garbage can, which is a great way to send a weekly message to neighbors walking and driving by. However, I've discovered that you need permission from these companies because they own the receptacles. Yes, I, I, I'm aware of that. <laughs> I was kind of figuring, you know, I'd, uh, ask for forgiveness and not permission, but whatever. Um, maybe we can get companies like Republic to agree to allow and encourage their customers to put it on the receptacles. That would be great. Um, yes, that someone could be you, Sheila. Thanks for volunteering. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> that would be fantastic. I, was, I think they're going to say no, uh, but worth a try. I put one on our garbage can and so far they haven't, you know, taken away my service, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, let's see. Thanks, Sheila. She'll give it a try. Uh, okay. Um, ditto for invasive removal. First company I tried left me with a mess. Uh, sorry, Elizabeth, I didn't know what it was ditto about. That just, oh, oh, you, oh and then you look, looking for a list of invasive removal company. Yeah, we have that on the Plant Nova Natives website. There's a list of companies that do that. And, you know, it's not cheap, but it's effective. <laughs> you know, what might take you personally 50 years to control, they can control in two days. So, yeah, it's worth the money if you have it. It's the end of the chat question so far. Anyone want to open up and just speak a question? Um, yeah, good time for, for me to uh, to uh, say something and to offer the use of or the uh, help of a government organization that uh, I'm associated with. Anybody who has known me longer than 15 minutes knows that I'm a congenital volunteer. And I really can't <laughs> help myself. And uh, one of the things that I volunteer at is the... Uh, uh, Fairfax County Park Foundation. And the foundation's executive director is Bobby Longworth. And between she and I have been talking uh, recently about how we can how we can involve our organization in this very worthy effort. I already live with a with a woman who's in the middle of it all, and so I'm sure there's some help there. Uh, but uh, 
Bobby and I want to uh, involve the Park Foundation and its members and board directors uh, in this effort. And uh, we will try our very best to, uh, to, to get them, to involve them in this. Uh, my, uh, my point is, it seems to me that our group seldom does much more than attend meetings. So we have to uh, see if we can't get their hands dirty a little bit. Um, so, Margaret, we will be in touch with you or with Nancy or with whoever else you would like to see how we can organize an effort with the uh, members of the board foundation. Right. And, and there's even some money in those pockets, but that's uh, that's the next step. So in any event, uh, uh, count us in, all right? And uh, we'll be talking to you. Certainly will. Hi, this is yeah. Ellen. Um, I just want to say I did hire a company to remove. I had a lot of ivy and bases coming from the neighbor's yard. And um, it wasn't that the landscape company identified the invasives. It was that my entire fence areas were full of invasive. So I just said, take everything out and mulch. And then I am methodically putting non, you know, natives back in. So uh, there was just no way for the work crews to discern if a little shrub was a native or not. And it was so intertwined with uh, the ivy. And I was trying to get rid of poison ivy too. Even though poison ivy is native, it's not family friendly. So. Um, I had that taken out with it. And so um, it did work, um, but I have found that I need to do some maintenance on it or get somebody back to do the maintenance, you know, and, and keep after it for maybe a year or two. I went around afterwards, you know, after the cicadas were gone and um, dug up the ones that popped through and that helped. And I'm, I'm not spraying them i'm actually digging them up because i have a lot of turtles that seem to come to the yard to nest and um so it does work it costs a bit of money but you're right someone said this it would have taken me 20 years and i don't really have 20 years of energy to <laughs> have taken it out personally it was too many it was you know too much work so success the, the landscaper did, his crew did a great job and then he mulched it after so I share that as success. Excellent. Yeah, you said you asked about pictures. Uh, we we all we always love pictures. <laughs> we want to use pictures on social media. We need them on our website. So if anyone has pictures of this kind of work in action, we will happily accept your picture as long as you will donate it to us in the public domain. Yeah, I think that we should also share the pictures. I, I work for the city of Alexandria and that's always something I'm looking for. Pictures of examples of, you know, uh, homeowners associations, you know, putting in trees and doing all that. It helps to see other people doing it. Helps tremendously to see that, yes. So our um, only criteria is that we are, we are incapable of keeping track of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures that we have. Um, so we can't credit people. So if, if you uh, feel possessive about your photo, don't give it to us. <laughs> but if you don't, <laughs> please give it to us and we'll put it out there for everyone to use. So anything on our website, therefore, is in the public domain and you can take it and use it for any purpose you want. And we, as I said, we have hundreds of photos up there already. And for what it's worth, my HOA is. Um, right in the middle of this big invasive removal out of a large wooded common area buffer between us and a, a more uh, shopping area. Um, and the company that the company came in and like removed a lot all these invasives and took some really it took some heavy machinery um, to get in there. And we have an arborist now who's coming to like um, kind of help get some of this extra extraneous um, miscellaneous um, miscellaneous uh, things that need to be removed in order to go in, for them to go in and really start to reestablish the native trees in the area. And supposedly they are actually gonna be maintaining it um, 
after the replanting, which we hope our hope our neighborhood will also get involved in the replanting um, next month. But you know, one of the things about after the removal, we have to actually have to go in. And there's an area where um, kind of like some biohazard needs to be uh, cleaned up from where there had been some homeless people living for quite some some time. So that area has to kind of be cleaned up before they can we can go in and actually do all the replanting and stuff like that. So cross our fingers that this is going to work. You know? <laughs> so. But that sounds like a great story and it'll be a great story for one of our monthly articles, maybe, if you will. Um, we should invite you out and see the end of product. <laughs> Send us photos. Can I advise, can I give you a small piece of advice? Um, your hired arborist, I hope, has to be certified by a, a certification company, one of which is the International Society of Arboriculturalists. Um, Let's make sure that we have quality people who know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> uh, two guys. Keep that name again. Uh, the International Society of Arbor Culturalists. Arbor they're located Culturalists. in Haymarket. And uh, they will help you. They will tell you whether or not an arborist is certified or not. And certification is a, is a rugged process that involves uh, study, it involves physical abilities. It involves uh, knowledge of trees. Uh, it's it's, an, it's a really an extensive program, and uh, we don't want people, you know, the good old boys driving around in their pickup truck and two chainsaws and they're working for beer money. Um, try to keep those people away from you, but uh, nevertheless, uh, look for certification, and you can ask. Ask the man. Do you are you certified? And the ones that aren't will always tell you that my yeah my card is in my truck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> say thank you very other, much. Go back inside. A couple other things in the chat. Someone said they're looking for a company that uses electric tools rather than gas power, and we just put one up on our website. Um, it's however it's just lawn, so. Um, you know, I don't know about chainsaws, <laughs> but for uh, lawn care, they only use electric tools. And then uh, Judith Schofield says she works for a big company. Well, this sounds like the first company we should be approaching. So, uh, Judith, if you could get in touch with us, um, we'll hook you up with our corporate team to, to be a model for us. That would be great. Margaret, speaking of the corporate team, hi, everybody. I'm working with Margaret on developing the corporate outreach. And I just want to ring the bell for everybody listening that we have some work in front of us on exactly the messaging. But one of our greatest challenges will be getting the meetings with the right decision makers so that the businesses can actually contribute to our campaign. And the way we're hoping to get those meetings is by reaching out to people like you who have best friends or fathers uh, who work in these businesses who can identify those decision makers. So if you have within your network people and corporations that you think should be approached to help contribute to in some of the ways that Margaret has described, please reach out to our website. Let us know because you will be serving an absolutely crucial function to actually getting these ideas implemented. So thank you. Yeah, and thank you. Go Margaret, what a great presentation. Thank you. <laughs> All on four days notice. <laughs> oh, hi everyone, uh, my name's Scott Cameron. Uh, like Harry, I'm an associate director of the Soil and Water Conservation District here in Northern Virginia. And I just wanted to uh, share that uh, in working very closely with Margaret and her team, we're working on a brochure that we hope to be able to send out this fall to all the homeowners associations in Fairfax County that we're sort of calling plant this, not that, in, in very simple layman's terms that you know, an English major as opposed to a biology major could understand. We're hoping to uh, provide homeowner associations 
uh, with a, a colorful, graphically appealing brochure that would point their members, the homeowners, toward planting native trees or, or native plants more generally for particular landscaping purposes, rather than you know the maybe initial instinct is to just pick up something pretty you know there at the Home Depot. Um, so hopefully that'll be coming out uh, sometime this fall. Maria Harwood is doing a lot of the the legwork on, on on that, and I wanted to acknowledge her efforts as well as well as all the the thanks to the folks um, and and Margaret's team who are providing the content. Uh, Margaret, uh, this is Jose Pinedo and. As I'm listening to your presentation, which, by the way, is absolutely fantastic, and I think that it's getting to the soul of, of the asphalt absolutely everywhere, you know, with the, all the different programs, initiatives that you are developing and whatnot, I was wondering about understanding the outreach, the possibility of having some of the key brochures, some of the key messages also in Spanish. Because you know, the, there are many, many people in this um, um, county that have the heart in the right place, but don't speak English necessarily. Yes, and so how to access and how to do the outreach, you know, at this level. I'm I'm Spanish speaking person. I can I have used I can use my two brains, the English and the Spanish, and I can put you know my services to translate whatever you ask me to do because it's basically you send me the, the piece you send me the write-up and i send them you translate it and you trust me that i'm doing a good spanish for my extended community that we need to warm and bring into our campaign so um thank you we will do that in a heartbeat it's very easy for us to reproduce these things but the translation part has been the part we didn't have so Yes, if you could email me so that I have your contact, I, I, we can, first of all, we would love to have our basic brochure translated for sure and anything else that might be useful. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, as Jean um, Cadet points out, there is a um, tree basics booklet to, um, put out by Fairfax County that is very um, extensive and is already translated into several different languages, including Spanish. So that, that is a current resource that is excellent. But in terms of marketing material, uh, we would love to translate our stuff. In addition to that, many of the, of the workforce of these companies that we want hire are Spanish speaking people and they're more comfortable in Spanish than they might be in English. So their use for that purpose uh, Josephina's suggestions are uh, uh, well taken. Yes. Yeah, I I, I um, link with Margaret, but any one of you who are on this um, campaigning dynamic and you see uh, the need of carrying the message uh, in Spanish, you know, through Margaret, let me know. And, you know, it is a matter of sitting and doing the translation. So by all means, you know, all feel uh, free to consider, you know, that service. Um, for me, it is very meaningful on both ways. Yes, on what we are doing, on reaching my community, and to making uh, the message really, you know, accessible to all. So, I will, I will help you, um, Harrison, or whoever else is in need of that. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's great, and and I have to point out that. Uh, an even bigger problem, and that was the fir first step, but the even bigger problem is that, well, when we have these resources, how do we get them to people? I mean, we, we, we just have no, you know, very little clue about how to get them to people. <laughs> so put your thinking cap onto that one. Really a big, important step for us. And that, that goes for all the, uh, uh, non-English speaking communities, but particularly the Spanish speakers would, if we don't know how, and we want some help in that regard. Mm. Okay, we we think about that and we sort of move on in that direction as well. Okay. Hi, this is Ajit Dhabli. I, I know we're already over time, and so maybe I should park my questions and send them in an email, or is this still a good time to slide in one last question? 
I'm, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Superb. Super. Hey, I, thank you so much for putting this presentation together. I'm learning. I'm a student. Um, we recently uh, purchased a property in Fairfax County. Um, I have some um, soil erosion, storm water drain off problem. I've been in touch with uh, the NOAA si uh, Soil and Cons Conservation District. Um, hopefully, we will have a site visit from them soon. But I'm grappling my head in terms of where should I start? Uh, and I and you were kind enough to point me to a, a web page on your website that lists out a lot of landscaping companies. And I guess the first step would be to hire or to consult with uh, one of those landscape architects. Um, I also think of this as uh, you know not only uh, doing uh, asking somebody to do the work, but there is uh, you know I get pleasure in doing the work myself, and then also want to make it into a demonstration uh, project so that others. Um, can feel motivated. So I love the idea of you know having a sign in my front yard saying, "Hey, this is where you will see." And so uh, I want to basically um, tell you that I want to be a demonstration project for us to all succeed, and that is my small way of contributing to the um, world in general. Uh, I know a lot of lofty ideas. Um, I think the first step is to consult with the landscape agent that you recommended and take it from there. Yes, uh, um, Margaret Chatham points out that you also have a free resource available through the Audubon at Home program. Uh, many of us are volunteers for that program and we'll come out to your property and walk it with you and help you strategize. Uh, so that's the wildlife sanctuary program of Audubon at Home and it's totally free. Um, as for signs, I, I, I love it when people put up signs. Most people don't wish they would. Um, there are a number of signs available. Um, we have a, on the Plant Nova Natives website, we have a link to a place where you can order a nice little um, aluminum sign that says native plants live here. It's quite pretty. So that's one. Um, but for trees, I should have mentioned this is very fun. I just made an arrangement with a company that makes arboretum type signs. Um, these are four by six inches or six by four. Um, and uh, I sent them a list of 50 some trees and some text that says, you know, a little thing about each tree, like this Virginia native um, has something read about it at all times of year, uh, the flowers, the stems, whatever, for red maple, for, you know, that kind of little fun fact. Yeah and our logo and a QR code. But um, so all you have to do is tell them which trees you have and you can get these signs for the trees. And um, they're like $14 each plus whatever you might pay for hardware to put them in place. So, and you can also adapt them if you like, if you don't want our logo on it, you can have them take it off or change the wording. Super, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, take lots of pictures. Everyone take lots of pictures of, as they go before and after. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we tend to put that this sort of thing on social media a lot. And as I said, when it comes to work on trees, we're going to have articles about that. Margaret, Margaret are we, are, uh, uh, Maria, are we coming to an end here? I think if we generally have about five more minutes in the program, but I don't see anything coming in in the chat. Anybody, please feel free to unmute yourself if you have any things to add. Lots of accolades I, for Margaret I in was the somewhat, chat. I was somewhat negligent in the introduction and not pointing out a very uh, trenchant fact. Today is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Right. And uh, with the 9-11 disasters and all that has happened since, all the wars, all the riots, all the other things, we have a great deal of work to do that can be accomplished through planting native trees. Believe it or not, I believe so. Uh, if you love trees like most, most of us do, then uh, this is a good commemoration of it. I, I live down the street from a neighbor who has just removed 21 fully grown trees from his property. I don't know why. 
and I haven't asked why, because I'm afraid I'd have to couch the answer, the question in such a way that won't get a fist in my face. And, uh, uh, but I, I would, I'm, I'm just speechless at this. Can I speak to that just for a second? Because uh, somebody brought up uh, in a conversation a couple of days ago that by seeing all the hurricane and weather damage that trees have caused to homes and electric lines, that she's starting to see trending a large movement to remove trees. And of course, one of her concerns is how do we counter that? Because that's what people are seeing in headlines right now. So I just throw that out to the group. Uh, if you see your neighbors starting to scratch their head and starting to think about taking down trees because it's dangerous to their house. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and see if you can help change your mind. And all I've really thought of telling people is that um, you should get an independent arborist who doesn't cut trees himself or herself to inspect your trees that are near your house every two years. Because the tree is very unlikely to fall and unlikely to fall specifically on your house <laughs> when it's totally healthy. And people can't tell them by the fine arborist, everybody. So we did that actually, not because we were worried about that. Actually, it was partly motivated by some, one of these um, fly by night guys coming by and saying that pine tree is leaning towards your house. It's going to fall. And I, I don't think so. So we hired a guy who, um, charged us $200 to come and walk around the, uh, and inspect every tree within reach of the house. And he of course said that there's nothing wrong with that pine tree. And just cause a tree leans towards the sun doesn't mean it's going to fall on your house. No, I don't agree. Yeah. Hello. You speaking to me? Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, I didn't know. Anyway, I have a lot of comments, but I'll keep it short. I've been doing this for 33 years in all capacities, but I took my observations is there's so many dead trees. I just drive along Annandale Road or any place. You'll see many, many, many dead trees. And every time I drive by, I say 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. And think about the homeowner who has to take these trees down because they're going to fall e, A on their house, B on their neighbor's yard, or three on the city streets. So before we start thinking about replacing trees on property, think about what you have to do to make that space available and to prep the area so that it was ready to receive a new tree. And all this costs money. And my experience, the homeowner sometimes doesn't quite understand this. And because of certain elements, you cannot claim under a homeowner's insurance policy because that's an act of God or climate change or something like that. We have a lot of things to talk about when we're talking about trees. And the thing that, I, since I'm a designer, I see uh, trees recommended for street trees that do not belong on a street edge and they're there because they're native and I have to work around them. So without belaboring the point, I just wanted to have you think about there are a lot of other as aspects besides just going out and planting a native tree. You have to think about the canopy space. You have to think about how big it's going to be. So I recommend using natives when you can. Uh, but I think you need to think about the poor architect or the poor person who is trying to issue permits, which you don't really need to plant a tree. But I would recommend you really look into this before you plant a tree to make sure you've got headspace, be sure you got irrigation, and be sure that when the tree grows to five, 10 years, it's gonna look appropriate for its surroundings. Uh, but I'll talk to you, Margaret, on another factor, but I don't want to take any more of your time. I think your lecture was very, very, very important. There's a lot of aspects to trees, and I really think your program is great. Let's go for it, okay? Thank you. Yeah, well, this is one of the reasons why we're starting this hotline, because, um, you know, on the one hand, the message is it's really not that hard to plant a tree, and it isn't all that hard to plant a tree, uh, but yeah, it would be good to plant the right one in the right space, mm -hmm. and we can't expect anyone except maybe a few of us 
to actually have the knowledge to make the best choice. To find your decider person. That's in my work. First thing I do before I get a contract is find who's going to make the decision and direct your comments to him. Because if you can't get the decider person to agree, you've, you've already spun your wheels. But good luck to all you dealing with homeowners associations or even homeowners. Got a lot of work cut out for you. Yes, thank you. And Ellen asked, what's the, uh, uh, right, the hotline number? It's, uh, I call it a hotline, but it's actually an email form to fill out. And as I said, we only have one volunteer to actually answer these questions so far. <laughs> so if anyone knows anyone uh, or themselves could help with that, that would be very helpful to know. It won't be that hard, but you do, you need to know something about trees, obviously. <laughs> but even people who know a lot about trees may not know in their head every detail about which one is, um, you know, salt sensitive or tolerates compaction or whatever. And we have this kind of laid out in charts to make it easier for our volunteers. Very quiet. <laughs> um, if I may ask one more question, uh, uh, you mentioned, uh, you know, please do not plant or do anything on park authority land. Uh, my la uh, so there's a buffer zone between between um, my land and neighbors' land, and I think the buffer zone belongs to Fairfax County. Uh, would the same rules apply? Um, well, basically, you can only plant on your own property, so yeah, yeah. yes, <laughs> but yeah. it isn't always that easy to figure out who owns certain lands. Uh, yeah, I, you, my, the goal was to um, just, uh, you know, instead of uh, that piece of land, you know, just having, uh, just being the wild west, you know, um, my structured efforts would not only make it look pretty, but most importantly, uh, do the right thing in terms of um, nature conservation. But I get your point. Yeah, I I would agree with you. You you know, because I'm the one who wanted to plan on the park. But normally, if there's a buffer zone between residents, it's actually normally a stormwater easement. That's frequently what that buffer zone is. So you're not allowed to plant. You can plant shrubs, right? But I don't think you can plant trees on a stormwater easement. Shrubs. Okay. Thank you. It's, it is complicated. We try and lay this out about utility easements on the Clanton of a Native website. We have a page about that. So if you want to know about VDOT and Dominion and whatever, and what's allowed and what isn't, we have that information laid out. And um, it is certainly fine to contact the owners of these lands because they may be uh, uh, open to it. Uh, but what we're definitely trying to push is the concept of people um, adding to the parks in a sense by having the um, appropriate plants on their adjacent land. I have a uh, I have a exact uh, uh, different problem. Uh, so as Mr. Glass Glasgow said, uh, you know he saw his neighbor cutting down twenty trees. Well, I I see that all the time in my neighborhood, and I'm the other way around. I want to keep those trees, but I but I want to make sure. Um, there is space below these trees that is full of native plants um, and, and, and that can survive uh, without um, direct uh, or much direct sunlight. And, and I think, um, you know, both can exist together. So it could be a symbiotic relationship and um, that's my goal. So I'm very excited. Thank you for, uh, you know, further motivating me. I, I hope to work with you and um, uh, all of you at some point. Much appreciated. Thank you. Advice, sir, before you get before you get going, be very careful how you approach the neighbor who's cutting down his tree. There are his trees, and he has the right to cut them down if he wants. So, uh, diplo diplomacy is a is an important skill to have when you're dealing with uh, with your neighbors. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. We're always trying to look for common ground. Yep. Start there. Uh, Emerald Ashbor. Um, Somebody want to speak to that? Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, 
two cents worth uh, on the property that I've been dealing with for what five ten years. Uh, we have uh, two ash trees, one of which is a victim of the emerald ash borer. And the thing is, it. I mean, I was so surprised to see an ash tree still in the city of Falls Church, which made a deliberate act for you to get rid of all the ash uh, street trees. And now people have forgotten that ash trees are are so vulnerable to this, and I have to go educate them. So anyway, we have to take the ash tree down, and I want to replace it with a Virginia native, but I have to have a lot of shade canopy, and so... I have to, I'm going to look up to see what an appropriate tree would be to shade a, play, a playground uh, beside a maple. So that's my, that's my job. But I was so surprised to see an ash tree. <laughs> you want to come and see the last ash tree in Falls Church? <laughs> so what, what's the prevalence of the emerald ash borer now? Not the person to ask that. Yeah, do you see it as a, as a, a continuing menace to trees. Absolutely, I would never plant an ash tree right now. It's, mm -hmm. I think they're all, they're mostly doomed. So based on ash trees, I have a question. I get a lot of ash tree volunteers. Should I just cut them down and replace them with something else? But ash just keeps coming up in my yard. Hmm. Same thing on our um, uh, Herndon and Friends meeting property. And I felt very sad to pull out this little ash um seedling because it was in the perfect location for a new tree but i i did pull it out okay so maybe i should just pull them out i just get lots of them all the time yeah and uh, i guess in time that'll stop happening i don't know it's been happening for almost 30 years <laughs> so i just mean as the, as the adults go and there's no one no more seeds yeah, yeah. Thanks. So, sorry, I don't know much about trees, but on these, if we said we have seedlings, do we, is they supposed to be removed or rather to leave them there and see on time they may come resilient or develop, you know, um, mutations or abilities uh, to win on the board or really the wisdom it is to remove them. I would say you see, yeah. so, uh, the feet of the of the strongest, uh, 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 but I don't know. I'm just wondering as as I hear that we have to remove the seedlings. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I was very unclear about that. No, no. I mean, absolutely agree with you. It's just that um, it didn't make sense for us to allow an ash to grow right next to our building when we just spent five thousand dollars to take down its parent. Yeah, but I think in um, areas that are out of reach of a building, that would be the way to go. Yeah, I agree with you. Let it let let them live. Maybe some of them will have resistance, or maybe the ash borer will go away. Mm, yeah, something like that. Yeah, there is. Um, I believe there's um, um, a pesticide, pesticide insecticide treatment that you can make on individual ash trees if you if they're not already infected with the ash borer. It's Last I heard, it was fairly expensive, like a hundred or two hundred dollars per tree. So it's not like you could do it through an entire forest. Mm -hmm. um, USDA Department of Agriculture is doing some research on biocontrol on emerald ash borers. Mm -hmm. Apparently, there's a tiny wasp that parasitizes uh, emerald ash borers, but you know it's a long way from proving the research to uh, getting that wasp you know widely distributed in. Uh, the remaining ash habitat uh, around the country. Well, thank you for that input. I appreciate that. However, oh. we're talking money, and that's a problem with all of this, especially when you have funds that are not easily accessed, means it's unbudgeted. So we're working on so many different aspects. Now, when you mention this cure for the ash tree, first thing I go to, let me see what's in the budget. This is a cost-effective outcome kind of decisions to make. And so these, it poses yet another problem. What's more important, get rid of the ash tree, get rid of the emerald or, bar, or replace it with a other tree or just live with it. So there are a lot of decisions that have to be made. 
So I appreciate this. I'm going to look into that so I can advise whoever is writing the checks about how to take care of the one remaining ash tree on the property. Thank you very much for that. I would like to point out that if you are treating an ash tree for emerald ash borer or to prevent emerald ash borer, keep in mind that this is a systemic treatment and it will essentially kill every other insect that might want to live on that ash tree. So if you are treating it for emerald ash borer, you are essentially removing it from whatever uh, other ecological benefit it might have for the forest. Oh boy. Yeah, that's been my concern. Thank you. I stepped out, I stepped outside for a minute because I was detecting the unmistakable sound of a chipper working in one of my neighbor's yards, the other <laughs> neighbor, another neighbor. And sure enough, I stepped outside and they're feeding the bits and pieces of a pine tree, it looks like, from, from where I could stand. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And um, to Joan's point about the expense of this, uh, it is tremendously expensive to take care of um, large trees and to then take them down. Um, but of course, if we can take care of them better, we may not have to take them down as soon. Uh, and so again, trying to find sources of money for people who cannot afford it themselves is on the wish list. Um, as a society, we should be able to do it. Can we figure out a way to do it? That remains to be seen. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I think I shall get in touch with you okay. rather than take everybody else's time. Thank okay. you so much. It was very informative. Thank you. Back to work. After having worked with Joan Huber um, in the, and when she and I were on the tree commission together, uh, uh, you're, you're in for a ball of energy, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> Good. That's what we need. A lot of energy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sitting down. That's why I'm not a ball of energy right now. <laughs> Good to see you, Harry. See you too, John. Quiet again. Do you have any last? questions or thoughts, I can stop the recording in two minutes, which is the end of our officially scheduled time. And, and if people still had questions, we can leave it open and go through a time to connect or chat. That's how these the green breakfasts when they were in person was a great time for people to reconnect some of what's been going on right now. But I think we're, we're all missing a little bit of that right now. I miss hearing people's updates. Maybe people have some updates they'd like to give the crowd. Or maybe not. By the way, I think Brian's grill may have gone out of business. No, really? Drove oh. by there and couldn't find a sign on their building. When, sure. we're, when we're allowed to actually assemble together, uh, we're gonna have, may have to find a new venue, huh? Well, okay. Yeah, permanently closed is what it says on Google. What's gonna go in there, another restaurant, we can just lure them into it. It'll probably be a bank. <laughs> it's always banks. How many banks, buildings do we need? <laughs> Sounds as if we're over, uh, Maria. If there's nothing more, let's pull the plug. Yeah.